Have you ever noticed how blowing on a hot beverage, say a cup of coffee, cools it down much faster than if you just left it on the table? What you are unconsciously doing is employing forced convection to cool your coffee faster. Let's take a deeper look at what forced convection is all about. Convection is the mode of heat transfer where energy is transferred to or from a cold body or a hot body by fluid motion. Back to the coffee example, the air you blow extracts heat from the coffee and convects it away from the mug. Based on how the fluid flow is created, convection can be classified into natural or forced convection. In forced convection, the fluid flow is generated by external means that is by a fan or because of an object's motion cooling of electronic components localized space heaters are a few examples of forced convection in natural convection a fluid flow is created because of buoyancy forces caused by temperature gradients due to the energy transfer between the body and the surroundings cooling of a hot coffee left on a table heating a room through heaters are examples of heat transfer via natural convection in this course our focus will be on forced convection consider a hot plate at a temperature of tw if the incoming fluid is at temperature t infinity and the heat transfer coefficient is h according to the newton's law of cooling the convection heat flux can be calculated using the following equation at the surface of the plate there is no fluid motion due to the no slip condition and therefore there will be only conduction from the plate into the fluid which is calculated using the fourier's law as shown here neglecting radiation these two fluxes must be equal at the wall and as a result we get the following flux balance here q double prime is a local heat flux and therefore h is generally referred to as the local heat transfer coefficient in general heat transfer is a function of space and hence the heat transfer coefficient will vary over the surface for engineering estimates however the averaged value of heat transfer coefficient for a surface can be defined as shown here subsequently the total heat transfer rate is defined by the following relation note that h is always a positive number and therefore the sign of q will depend on the temperature difference between tw and t infinity the essence of any convection problem is determining the local and average heat transfer coefficients which can subsequently be used to calculate the local flux or the total heat transfer rate let's go back to the heat flux balance at the wall if we now non dimensionalize this equation using a reference length l and a reference temperature t infinity the heat flux balance can be rewritten as shown here note that tw t infinity h and kf are assumed to be constant the circle term here is generally referred to as the nusselt number it is a non dimensional measure of the convective heat transfer relative to the heat transfer that would occur by conduction into the fluid if the heat transfer coefficient used to define the nusselt number is local then the nusselt number is also local to obtain the average nusselt number one can instead use the average heat transfer coefficient experiments have shown that the nusselt number correlates with the reynolds number which represents the ratio of the inertial to viscous forces in a fluid flow and the prandtl number which represents the ratio of viscous diffusion of momentum to the thermal diffusion in the fluid to determine the heat transfer coefficient there are two ways through a series of experiments where key parameters such as geometric and thermal 
are varied and the fluxes are measured carefully. The second way is through simulations wherein the governing equations are solved using CFD techniques for specific geometries and flow and thermal boundary conditions. This is akin to doing experiments except now we are simulating the fluid flow numerically using computers. However, it is impossible to perform experiments or simulations for every conceivable geometry and flow condition. To address this issue, engineers make use of similarity methods and dimensional groups to develop correlations for common geometries and flow conditions. There are two types of similarities, geometric and dynamic. Geometric similarity means that two bodies are geometrically similar if they are perfectly scaled versions of each other. Consider the following two objects. If they are geometrically similar, then it is required that the ratio of corresponding lengths of the two objects, that is L1 over L2, W1 over W2 and etc. are the same. Dynamic similarity requires that for geometrically similar bodies, the flow patterns are also similar. That is, the velocities, velocity gradients, fluid forces and streamlines all scale with the geometry. For heat transfer problems, it is also required that the temperatures, temperature gradients and heat fluxes scale with the geometry. For the case of forced convection, Two geometrically similar systems are dynamically similar if their Nusselt, Reynolds and Prandtl numbers are the same. Is it possible to formulate a relationship between these dimensionless numbers? Yes, it is. In order to determine that, multiple experiments can be set up at varying Reynolds and Prandtl numbers to calculate the corresponding Nusselt numbers. And as it turns out, researchers have found that for a fixed Prandtl number, that is for a specific fluid, an empirical correlation of the following form can be written to calculate the global Nusselt number. On a log-log scale, this correlation looks like a straight line as shown in this plot here. The values of C, M and N are dependent on the geometry of the object and the flow type and are oftentimes independent of the fluid itself. That was a quick brief on the basics of forced convection.